YouTube kick. Yes, young woman gets kicked out of the locker room because she didn't want to change with trans women. All right, let's get right to it. So yet another trans cultic offensive uh, offense against children. Women decency, reason, and basic human rights has taken place. Such offenses will continue unless, um, un unless and until right thinking Americans oppose them with courage, tenacity, and lawsuits. The Springfield YMCA Typhoon's swim team, the SPY, in Springfield, Illinois, now allows biological men who pretend to be women to enter the girls' locker room, including when minor girls are present and undressing. The coaches in the YMCA administrators begin this practice without telling any of the girls or the parents. Here is an excerpt from the summary below. So pretty much what ends up happening, and I'll explain a little bit more to the story. So they all have this meeting, right? So on August 27th, this young girl goes into the bathroom. She sees a young trans man changing. Then she goes up to the person at the, uh, the front, front counter and says, hey, there's a guy in my bathroom changing. And the people say there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, so later on in May, they end up going to this place where they end up talking to each other. And they say, hey, at this meeting they go to, they go, hey, is there anything we can do about these transgender people coming into the place? And you know what the people say? They say there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, they said, well, can they have their own private room? They say, no, because that's discrimination. And so they're like, well, then what are we supposed to do? And they say they can't do anything because it's against the law. So in Illinois, there's a place, apparently there's a law in, in place that says that you cannot uh, discriminate and everybody's allowed to change in one place, in facilities. And I'll read that to you right now. <clears throat> Dang, that is really small for you guys. Let's see if I can zoom in for you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> 775 ILAC S55-103 uh, from chapter 68 uh, par F, I don't know what the par part means uh, F103 section 5103 exemption nothing in this article shall apply to facilities distinctly private any facility as to discrimination based on sex which is distinctly private in nature such as restroom showers bathhouses and health clubs so that's that's the law. So pretty much what I got from that when I was reading it earlier that they're saying that you cannot discriminate against people based on their sex when it comes to restrooms, showers, baths, or health clubs. So you have to allow somebody who may identify as such. Here's my thing about that though. And it's the law, so I'm assuming there's more nuance to it, but I'm just thinking like it even says if you read more into this article, which you can find, um I'll show you if you just go to my well, you can't just go to my Twitter. <laughs> If you go to breakthrough-ideas.com and just type in YMCA, it should come up if you type that in Google. But I want to say this. As you continue to go down this thing, I start to wonder, what is it? It doesn't even matter if the person is transgender because it even says later on that you can just be a cross-dresser. You can just be a cross. You don't have to be trans. You can just be a man or female who dresses in. That doesn't really make sense to me now that I really think it out. What is considered cross-dressing? Like, what? Like, if a man just walks in there with pants and a T-shirt on, can he just say, I'm cross-dressing as a woman? Because, you know, women do wear jeans and a T-shirt. Do you have to wear something that would come off as feminine? I mean, do you have to wear a dress? Like, what is considered cross-dressing to allow you to go into a woman's bathroom? That's where the fine line to me doesn't make any sense. Because if a 15-year-old, 13-year-old, 14-year-old little girl walks into a bathroom and a guy just walks in behind her, you can't say nothing? You just got to be, oh, okay. So these little girls, they have to get out of the swim pool soaking wet and got to go straight to the house. And I, I mean, there's, there's no choice. It's what you have to do. But it's just crazy that we've gotten to this point that little girls can't even feel safe. Because guess what? As you saw earlier, the parents didn't even know about this until later. So you had little girls and little boys going into the bathroom with the opposite gender in there. And the parents probably didn't know. They were just dropping their kid off and going about their merry way until the kids came and told them, obviously. And so what ended up getting this little girl banned, right? Let me tell you. Let me break it down. So what ended up happening is this little girl went into the bathroom and she put up a sign that said, uh, let me read it verbatim because I'm going to say it wrong.
And now I can't find it. Of course not. Okay, okay. Okay, so never mind. The sign says, women's right, biological women only in safe sports. So when you walk into the bathroom, there was a sign hanging up that said, women's right, biological women only in safe sport. And they banned her for that because she she admitted to it. She said, I'm the one who put it up because I wanted to have a safe place to go. And they banned her. Uh... We said this years ago when Target was the, one of the first people to ever say this. <sighs> At what point are we going to protect the children and the women? At what point do they matter? If a little girl can't even go to her, a bathroom anymore and change her clothes, like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> what are, do you think there's not going to be creeps that are going to come in there? Do you think there's just not going to be that one guy who's just waiting? It, it's sad because these little girls, they have to wash their shoulders. They now have to go out of their way not to use the public bathroom? So if you are sitting somewhere and you got to go to the bathroom, you have to be thinking inside your mind as a little girl or even a woman, I could possibly go in here and there'd be a dude in there waiting for me. I literally got to, I got to literally either hold myself or I got to use the bathroom before I ever get here. And I have to pray to God I don't have to use the bathroom while I'm here. Or should any emergency happen that happens with females? For God forbid anything happen with them that causes them to need to use the restroom. You know what I mean? They're screwed. A man, a man is, in this case, a man's not going to have trouble. A man, a man walks into a bathroom and another woman's in there. Yeah, that's super uncomfortable. Don't get me wrong. But he, honestly, that woman tries anything, he's going to be able to fight her off. Little girls are not going to be able to fight off grown men. Women are not going to be, go, be able to go into the bathroom and fight off a man. And you know what's so disgusting? If this stuff can be planned. All you have to do is get a group of five guys. Just wait. Wait until just the perfect time. Wait for that little girl, that young, that one, young woman to go in there. Get a guy to stand in front of the door and make sure nobody can open it. And disgusting things are going to happen. I just read a story about a young little girl who was 11 years old who had that happen to her. I'm so sorry for women, you know, as much as, you know, we get all this red pill content and all that kind of stuff that really pushes women down and causes them blah, blah, blah. I, I get it. I'm on the other side over here right now. I'm just trying to protect women from these evil people, evil men and evil women who don't care about y'all anymore. We got to continue to speak up. And women, y'all have to speak up even more than us men do because y'all are the ones who are going to get victimized. Honestly, you know, it was bad before, but it's going to get worse if we continue to let men go in the women's bathroom. I want to say this before I go, man. Please keep me in mind. Listen, these people who call themselves trans or cross-dressing, they are normally not mentally stable. So you're putting mentally unstable people in a room with these people. What do you think is going to happen? It's just a matter of time. Are all trans people like this? Of course not. Are all um, cross-gender, cross-dressing people like this? Uh, no, not all of them. But am I going to have to say that a lot of them are probably struggling mentally? Of course I do. I'm going to have to say that. Anybody can tell you that. A person who is trans, what do they normally go to when they talk about being trans? Oh, I, I struggle with mental health. They always say that. I struggle with depression. I struggle with, uh, I was struggling, wanted to take my life. And all these other stuff, anxiety and all this other stuff that comes with it. I rarely even hear a trans person go, no, I was perfectly mentally stable. I still chose this route. No, they don't do that. They don't. And somebody who cross-dresses, they never go, yeah, mentally unflawed. Because normally some guys who cross-dress, they do it for fetish reasons. I'm just saying, man, look into it. Protect the little girls, man. Come on. It's ridiculous. And I'm trying to stay lighthearted, but it's, it's, I want to say a whole bunch more as far as like how evil and despicable it is. But you get the point. I don't really have to drive that home. I'm just saying, man, like, let's just make a true difference. Let's make this world safer for women now. Anyway, I'm out.